And we've heard earlier how the UK is being urged to invest more into artificial meat to help tackle the climate crisis. And we've been asking on social media if you would swap out your burger for lab-grown meat. And around three quarters of you said that you wouldn't. Uh, Claudia Carter, for example, said she simply doesn't, if she doesn't, simply doesn't eat meat if she wants a vegetarian meal instead of buying an artificially produced substitute. And if you want to join the debate, please do use the hashtag Daily Climate Show or you can tweet us at, at Sky News. So, Juliet, what's your view on this? I know some people are turned off by the idea of lab-grown meat. In, in fact, for example, the French Minister of Agriculture uh, has said uh, meat comes from life, not laboratories. So what's your take on it? Well, I don't really have a particular, I certainly don't have a philosophical feeling around it in that way. I just, I look at the numbers and I think in terms of practically speaking, you know, we're, we're almost at 8 billion people on this planet. We're going to be at 10 billion by 2050. Those are a lot of mouths to feed. People need protein. We need to do it differently. Uh, and as we know, you know, the, the sort of, Certainly the, the meat, the dairy, particularly the beef um, industry is responsible for so much methane. And I will, you know, I will say actually, you know, EU's farm animals produce more emissions than cars and vans combined. So, you know, we need to find a better way of eating. George Monbiot, I know you've done a lot of work in this area. What difference do you think that artificial meat could make when it comes to tackling climate change? We could massively lower emissions. I mean, I think the most important technology actually is not so much the artificial or cultured meat, but it's the it's a, the, the feedstock that you use and, and precision fermentation, using bacteria to create proteins and fats, um, bacteria which don't even need any agricultural feedstock at all because, um, for instance, the ones which oxygenate hydrogen, um, they don't need photosynthesis, they're basically just using carbon dioxide, water and electricity to make protein and fat. And you've minimised the land area. You're using hardly any land. You're using far lower resources to produce fat and protein, which can then be turned into the million things that we eat already, plus a million things we haven't even conceived of at the moment. And when you compare that to your chicken broiler shed or your industrial concentrated pork production with their immense cruelty, their really disgusting um, uh, nature swimming around in feces, okay. lots of contamination. You know, really, you know, that clean meat and the clean substitutes for it, it's very hard to see how those are less appealing than, than, than the things they're meant to replace.